1980, the average American purchased an average of 12 new clothing items per year. Today, we purchase an average of 68 new clothing items per year, and most of those clothes get worn between three and seven times before they're disposed of. What the freaking heck? We are drowning in our own closets. A closet declutter video has been one of the most highly requested videos on my channel, so we're doing it. In recent years, I really struggled to keep my bedroom tidy. My closet was always in chaos, like clothes were everywhere in my room, my drawers like couldn't close, and today we're gonna do a little closet declutter while I talk through some of the changes I made to keep my closet organized, to keep my bedroom tidy, and to keep my stress levels low. Because yes, having too many clothes has a huge impact on the environment, on human labor, but it also has a giant impact in your bedroom and on your well-being. It, it takes a toll. So we're gonna do a little declutter today, and I'm gonna talk about how to declutter without getting like overwhelmed, exhausted, discouraged emotionally depleted. I'm gonna talk about the core problem underneath the clutter problem, the thing that's causing the clutter, and also how you can prevent clutter long term. So instead of just like putting tape on a sinking boat, we're gonna talk about the thing that's building up the pressure constantly. These are the changes that helped me and they're gonna help you too. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Cozy Chores. Let's do our chores together. Chore chats, I'm just like doing everyday stuff, cozy chores and chat and hang out and like goss, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hello and welcome to my bedroom. Step number one for me of doing like a big declutter, I have to romance myself. I like candles. I put a bow in my hair. I put on a favorite comfy sweater. If you're not filming a YouTube video, you can put on music, listen to a podcast. I, yeah, I put makeup on. Why? Because it makes me feel cute and like I'm having an event. I'm having an event, the bedroom door is locked, no one's allowed to come bother me. Give yourself like the space and the time so that you can actually enjoy it and not feel stressed. Like, I like to do a declutter when the seasons change, especially because in my room, I don't have room to have my winter and summer clothes out at the same time. I gotta like switch them out. So I'm switching clothes out anyway. Yeah, step number one, romance yourself. Okay, if you don't have a giant celebrity closet, don't worry, neither do I. This is the storage I have, not by choice, but it's what I have. One tiny little baby closet, a storage space up there that is most likely haunted and that's just what it is. And then I have one little set of drawers and this is it. I put stuff that's out of season. I put, you know, winter stuff under the bed, but that is really all the storage I have. So TLDR, what we're working with is one small dresser and one closet and then whatever I can fit under the bed. We're gonna make it work. Okay, babies, let's just dig in. I'm gonna tell you what right now. These little piece of clothing popping up from the closet, this is a problem. This is the barometer of whether I have too many clothes or not. I can't even close my closet easily, like always having to like tuck that in or like never being able to get my drawers shut all the way. That is, that's an indicator of a problem to me. I have more clothes than I have storage space. This is irksome. This is an indicator of like, unhealth. This means my closet is unhealthy. If this, if this stuff is happening all the time, it basically means my room is never going to be tidy. Because guess what? I'm in a rush all the time. We're moving quickly. I don't have time to like perfectly fold and press down and scrunch every piece of clothing every time. Realistically, it's not going to happen. So that just tells me I have too many clothes. Um, okay. Here we are. Up here on this shelf, I keep all my sweaters. I prefer this so much to having them in a drawer because it's much easier for me to look at them lined up this way and immediately see what options I have. Let's just tackle this whole shelf. I love sweaters. Sweaters and sweatshirts are definitely my addiction. And I don't think that's so bad. Like pick your areas of having a lot. Oh my God, this is too many though. What a cucaracha mess. Ugh. All right, let's talk through some things. Sorry, I needed a moment. I just realized my pants were on backwards. So fixed that. Okay, I'm going to just like go through each item at a time. I'm gonna pare some stuff down. And the way I like to do this is in rounds. So I might do like one round of sorting. You, you can have like a keep pile, a maybe pile and a donate, like definitely getting rid of it. And then I'd like to go and do another round between the keep and the maybe and see if we can pare down more, if I can get more honest with myself. 
donate. He, okay, this is a good opportunity to fold our clothes too. Do you ding dong? Oh, my brother made this for me. I like that. And not just because he made it, but because I actually wear it. I like this guy. Kind of ratty, kind of trash. It's going. I shrunk it in the wash. No, shrunk this in the wash too, but I do wear it. While I do this, let me give you a hot take. I'm gonna give you a hot take, which is a hot take on storage containers. Yes, personally, my opinion is like, I don't believe in using them. I don't believe in them. I, I mean, I believe in them, I know they exist, but I'm very against renting a storage container for that extra stuff, unless it's for like a limited amount of time for a specific reason. But other than that, my personal opinion is, if I can like survive and function happily in my life, while a bunch of stuff is in a storage container long term, then I really don't need it. I really don't. I think what goes in the storage container a lot is usually like those sentimental items or items that there's like some kind of fraught emotion around it that makes it really hard to get rid of. So in that case, you're really paying for a storage container to hold your guilt, to hold your fraught emotion because you're already living without the stuff whatever's in the storage container you're already living and functioning fine without it you literally can live without it because you're doing it right now it's in the storage container the thing that you're keeping and storing is the guilt think about that that's dirty step number one is i need to learn how to do my laundry and i love this Ooh la la sweet sweet <sighs> sweet sweet okay this one's hard for me i wear this very rarely but it's like the one workout thing I have that's like hot and not just like frump. So like sometimes I, I'm hiking and I need to be hot. You know what I mean? I need to be cute. It's rare. We'll see, we'll see. Whoa, I'm gonna switch gears and pop over to the dresser for a moment. So obviously I have not decluttered my closet until this very moment. That's why there's so much to get rid of. This dresser is the one thing I have decluttered. So there's not a lot to do here, but I know people like to see what's in the drawers. So I'll show you. This drawer and this, this is all the tops I have. Usually that's folded more nicely. But these are, these two small drawers are all of my tops and I am obnoxiously proud of that. Okay, these are all of my pants. This is it, this is all I ever wear. And this drawer, this drawer is definitely a mess, but this is PJs and workout stuff and I've decided that's allowed to be a mess because it's my house, ha ha ha. Now what's in this top drawer, you might ask? Underwear. Dad, Luke, grandpa from the grave. This is your cue. Um, get out, get out. Number one, every single item of bra or underwear in this drawer is from Skims. Bras are actually no laughing matter to me. In addition to just like the everyday discomfort of a bra, I have scoliosis. I wore a very attractive back brace for 10 years insert image here and I still have back pain every single day I'm very sensitive to like weight distribution on my back before skims for my entire life all I ever wore was like a sports bra that was the only thing that was comfortable and like supportive enough until I started a friend gave me skims a naked scoop bralette I'm gonna link the one I love it never gives me back pain I wear it all day long and in addition to not giving me back pain it actually gives me a shape I don't have to just be in a sports bra it's insane that I will never shut up about it because to me it's like it's like activism for a woman to talk about this bra I got hooked on the only like supportive push-up bra I will ever wear. It's their wireless form push-up plunge. I'm wearing it now. I'm not gonna flash you. I could scream about it. Wireless bra, but it is push-up. It has these microfiber wings, so it's completely seamless. These like cloud-like foam pads. It's so soft. It's the silkiest fabric. This, there's no wire on it. And I'll show you a little before and after. Okay, so for example, this is this like baby dollar shirt that I love, but I basically could never wear it because the neckline is so low, it's just like it gaps, and I could never find the bra that did not kill my back within like an hour of wearing it. Cut to the Skims wireless form push-up. Wow, okay, look at my boobs, how weird is this? But genuinely, as awkward as it is to make you look at my boobs <laughs> on camera, this is like something every woman has to think about and deal with 
every single day. It's the only like supportive push-up bra I can wear and I will not have back pain all day long. It's just like the cut is so thoughtful. It fits with like the super wide scoop neck kind of shirt. It looks natural, it looks like me. It doesn't just look like I'm wearing a giant fake push-up bra. So yeah, sorry I'm just making you look at my boobs. This is not usually what I wanna do, but we all have to get dressed every day and I'm just feeling cuter. Not having to just like always tape my boobs down just so I don't have back pain all day. My podcast partner Jess is has a much bigger chest than I do and she also swears by the Skims bras. Like it's just, they're just out here helping women. They have 62 sizes in their bras from size 30A to 46H. Like they have you covered. If you want to fully appreciate why I'm standing here making you look at my boobs, um, go shop the bras at skims.com. You will understand why. And please let them know I sent you that I'm screaming the good name of Skims. When you check out, there's like a survey, just select YouTube and select my name to let them know I sent you. It's a big deal to me and I'm delighted to stand here and make you look at me in various shirts. Thank you to Skims for sponsoring both my boobs and this video. Okay, round one done. Everything I wanna keep, things I'm donating. Now round two, I'm gonna go back through the things I'm keeping and see if anything was like on the fence. Okay, I'm getting too hot, I'm too hot. Oh, my shirt's backwards too. How do I put my entire outfit on backwards? Okay, I got rid of two more things. All of these, all of these are getting donated. Okay. I've pared down my sweaters and sweatshirts, but I wanna pause here real quick because decluttering, donating items, paring down, tidying up, well and great. Good job, good job me. Let's be proud of ourselves. I did a good job. That is the appropriate number of sweaters I should be owning given my shelf space. Nice. But there's a problem. It does not address the deeper issue. I'm gonna be right back in the same spot with too many clothes and an overflowing closet in a couple of months if I don't address the problem most of us have, which is a shopping issue. Most of us have that problem today. Fast fashion and low prices makes it really easy. The other thing is with the fast fashion, there's been like a deterioration of clothing quality in like almost all clothing brands, in a lot of clothing brands. And when clothes are lower quality and they've got like more elastane and more synthetic fibers that are cheaper and stretchier, they deteriorate in the wash faster. So we're gonna talk about like the most important change I made that I'm working on currently. So personally, I just noticed that I was like buying new clothes all the time. Why did I feel every season like I needed to buy like a whole new wardrobe basically? And I started feeling kind of down on myself about it. Overconsumption, it's this feeling of like, it's never enough. It's never enough. I'm not good enough until I get this next piece of clothing. What I have now isn't good enough. My life isn't good enough now until I get the next thing. And that feeling is something I've talked a lot about in videos before of just being like, I'll be happy when, I'll be happy once I get the perfect shoes, I'll be happy once I have the perfect dress, is just like, it's just an unhappy way to live. And I didn't like living that way. So I recently came to this resolution that like, I wanted to see how close I can get to buying those 12 items of clothing a year and that's it. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, progress not perfection but how close can i get to just like 12 items a year so i think of it as kind of like six items per season cold season like co cold dark winter fall depression season and hot weather season on one hand that doesn't seem like that much but it also like should be plenty if i could figure out how to buy clothes that are high quality and aren't going to degrade so quickly if i could figure out what fits me well and what's going to like look good on me for a long time then after a year or two of this, I'm gonna have a pretty full closet of things and I'm not even gonna feel like I need six more things in the winter, you know what I mean? If I don't have to keep throwing things away or donating things, then I don't have to keep replacing them. So, <laughs> I came up with this system. I just made like an Excel sheet and I'll share the one I made if anybody wants to like download and copy and start their own or adjust things, where I just started tracking all the clothing purchases I made the brand, the size, and then taking notes on like how the fit was. Did I wear it enough? Was it a good purchase? Was it kind of a failed purchase? Did I return it? And most importantly, what materials 
it used. You know, I got some sweaters that were like really cute and really trendy, but they ended up being itchy and I didn't know that that material I would have like an allergic reaction to. And so I never ended up wearing them and it was a huge waste. Like which materials are worth spending more on, which aren't, which ones are gonna degrade faster, which one like falls on my body faster. I don't know anything about fashion or textiles at all. And so I started making the sheet just to like kind of track what I actually end up wearing and liking and using and, and hopefully it would help me find trends in like the clothing brands I like. This is a safe brand to invest some money in because I usually end up liking and wearing the stuff a lot. And like this is one that looks really trendy and cute but I it doesn't end up holding up long term. And as far as the like six items of clothing for the fall and winter, it is actually kind of plenty. That has afforded me a pair of boots, um, three sweaters, I think one pair of pants. So I've got one item left. I've returned some things and I'm learning so much more about like what clothing, brands, materials I actually like and are gonna hold up long-term. Of course, basically the closer you can get to like natural materials, cotton, wool, stuff like that, the longer your clothing is gonna hold up. And you wanna have like a high percentage of those in the clothes. Sometimes I get a mix that has some synthetic materials. I think I found I want the natural non-synthetic materials to be at least like 60, 70% of the item. I've learned that cashmere is nice, but also really expensive and sometimes worth the investment. But I've also learned that merino wool, I feel like is almost as soft and nice, but it holds up better long-term and sometimes not as expensive. Basically, I've been also trying to like pay more for a nicer quality item and I only have to buy one of them. So this is the way I'm trying to experiment, make one maybe more expensive purchase, doesn't have to be, but hopefully it's better quality, better tailored, better material, is gonna hold up, looks better on me, looks higher quality, and I'm just gonna be a chic wherever I go. So this is my mission. I'm gonna put that Google Sheets <laughs> link in the, in the video description if you guys wanna just like copy that and make your own. But I'm also honestly really loving doing that. It feels like I'm doing research. I am. I am a researcher. And it's also making me be like super conscious of how many items of clothing I'm buying. Okay, now let's talk about clothes. I started this video wearing my entire outfit backwards by accident. Okay. Yeah! Let's tackle the rest of this. And while I do this, I want to talk a little bit about sentimental items. I think those are the items we get most tripped up with when you're trying to declutter, get rid of stuff. Somebody gave this to me, this has a memory, somebody died. It's tricky stuff and I think there's value to keeping some sentimental stuff and I think some of it, a part of you wants to be able to give away. I'll, I'm just gonna talk through how I think through that stuff. So I really struggle with sentimental items and like keeping so many that I'm drowning in it. I've shared this before on the channel, but what I realized is that A, those things do not contain your loved one and B, like they don't have to know about it. I still have lots of clothing items that somebody gave me and I feel really bad giving it away. So number one, I ask myself like, do I actually use it? Do I actually ever wear it? If it's just sitting in back in my closet and I'm never touching it, then I know it's just out of guilt. And it still feels really hard to give those things away. So what I do now is like, I let myself keep it for a month or a few months. And something about like keeping it for some amount of time, it's like, the guilt starts to feel old. So that's one tip. If the sentimental burden is too heavy for you to give it away right now, I'd say let yourself keep it. Let it sit in the back of the closet for a couple of months and see if it's a little easier to give away in a couple of months. Cause they're actually like not gonna feel it when you give it away. Some part of me feels like they're gonna feel it. They're not. The other thing I try to remind myself is that I think I feel this obligation. Like they, put the love and time and money and effort into getting me a nice gift. Like I owe them, I owe them to keep this and to wear it and to hate it for the rest of my life. I owe them that. No, I don't. All I owe them is like being genuinely, sincerely grateful when they give it to me. And then I can do whatever I want with it. Like them giving it to me, that was the gift for them. The experience of me wearing that thing is not something I owe them. And I do still keep some sentimental items. Maybe 
It's like not a sweatshirt I wear, but it is basically a memento from a period in my life or an experience I went through or whatever. And I keep like a select number of items. So I have like a memento box up here. I allocate myself some space for some mementos, but I don't need to keep every single thing. Yeah, things you're keeping out of guilt. We're not keeping the guilt in a storage container. We're not keeping the guilt in our closet. It's really just not benefiting anybody. Like nobody, great aunt Carol's life is not better because I'm holding on to my guilt. She doesn't give a fuck. Fits me weird. Cheap and unflattering. Cute. I don't think I'm really wearing this. Ooh, this was a cheap, cheap jacket I bought last year. It's not soft. It doesn't feel nice. I don't like the cut of it and I don't wear it. It's in great condition. I'm gonna donate. This goes in my summer box. Tacky and stupid. That's for summer. If you're not already keeping your skirts on like one of these racks with all the pins, I really recommend because it's easy to see, easy to access, easy to put away. La 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 la. Mm, this guy, never wear it. All of those can stay. That's my summer pile. That's my maybe. This is my donate. BTW, velvet hangers. I swear by these because things almost never fall off unless I like didn't get them on the hanger and it keeps my closet so much more organized because like I'm not gonna do all the like straps in the clips in the whatever. I've never had one of these break. I've had them for years. Must have, must have. So funny. I feel like I do have a bunch of really cute clothes <laughs> and I like almost never wear them in videos. <laughs> I almost am always just in my like home workwear, loungewear in videos. But I own clothes. I swear to God, I own clothes. Never, ever ever wear it. A donate. That's for the summer. If you haven't worn it in like a year, you don't wear it. If a full year and all the seasons have passed and you don't wear it, then the answer is you don't wear it. Look at this. Look at all these freed up hangers already. Look at that. Mm. I want to wear this, but I don't. Oh my God. This is this freaking tiny little mini dress. It's what I wore on my first date with Justin. I'm keeping this forever. I wear it still. I break it out every once in a while and I'm like, rem oh, I fell. What I was gonna say, I was, I was gonna be like, mm, remember this? But I fell, cause I, my foot missed the bed. Okay, sweet. I feel like this is like too little girly though. Sometimes I'm a little girl though. And sometimes I'm a little boy. I think I'd be keeping it for now. That's annoying me just looking at it. Yeah, your time is done. Yes, perhaps. A lot of people commented when I said I was gonna make this declutter video, people commented saying like, they never get around to actually taking the donation bag to the donation center or whatever, and then it's just more clutter, and I totally relate to that. My solution, I just put it in my car. And whenever it occurs to me, I'm like, oh, I'm by Goodwill, go drop it off. If you don't have a car, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, I live in a city, I live in New York City, I don't have a car. It's actually even easier when you're living in a packed city and don't have a car, because when you're in a packed city, you can put stuff on your front doorstep. I just put a box out there right on my front doorstep, it says free, please take. Those things are gone in an instant. So usually I try to donate, but if you're saying you can't get the do donation center, do it an unofficial way. Those are my tips. If you guys have different tips for like how to get your stuff donated, how to get it out, how to pare down on clutter, uh, sentimental items, put those in the comments. People read the comments because people always have great tips. Whoa, I did a good job. Wow, okay, I have like a ton of stuff to donate. This is all in great condition, but I'm not wearing it. And then all of this is just summer stuff and I need to put in my summer box. Ooh. Hold on. Ooh. You know what I mean? Come here, dude. Uh, sentimental box. Christmas decor. Whoop-dee-doo-dah. Okay. See you next year. Ooh, that's nice. Mm. Ah, ah. Okay, that was annoying. I feel like I need to light more candles. I think one other thing that's hard with like having too many clothes and trying to pare down is if you are on like a self-love journey like I've been on and I think like most women are on of like trying to grow out of a mentality 
that I don't deserve nice things and I don't deserve to spend money on myself. And like, I'm allowed to buy clothes, you know, when I reach a different weight or when I look different or when I fix my acne, I, I'll, I'll treat myself later then. So I, I also don't think that that's a very nice mentality to have towards yourself. And I've done a lot of work to grow out of that and be like, I am allowed to spend money on myself. I am allowed to get like an outfit that makes me feel really good. We actually, we did a whole episode about this on my podcast and my podcast partner, Jess, was talking about how like with weight fluctuations and trying to have like a more positive body image, something that has been really positive for her is like letting her self buy clothes that like suits where she is at that period in time. And I relate to that as well. And she had a really good suggestion for that, which was using like clothing rental services you can do where you get to rent like a couple items of clothes for the month. Another thing it's helped me with wanting to be a different size and like awaiting the version of myself that is smaller because I just rent clothes for that month. So now I'm just focused on what size am I this month and I'll rent that. And oh, it's really great. helpful. And I thought that was a genius recommendation. I just wanted to call that out because I feel like when you're like healing from like a past where you feel like you don't deserve to treat yourself nicely, dressing yourself up, I think it can be a genuine act of self-love in addition to like more significant, deeper things like therapy and how you speak to yourself and like being nice to you. I think that was a really nice recommendation from my pod partner, Jess. Okay, I was just going through my summer stuff and I found this, this makes me so happy. This is a vintage, authentic vintage dress from the 80s that was my mom's and she gave it to me just recently. I'm gonna make you look at it on me. I'm gonna make you do it. I mean, come the heck on. Come the heck on, that's so stinking cute. Yeah. Ooh, oh, this is just, I don't know why this is like such a fun nostalgia. Like they don't really make dresses like this anymore. You know what else I just noticed is it has like this drop waist cut, which I feel like is super trendy right now, the drop waist. Lauren Winkler was on it. She was on it. Anyhow, I digress. I'm getting distracted. This is with all my winter stuff in here. I have all this extra space and all these hangers, okay? I'm feeling amazing. Let's hit these shoes. I love shoes. Shoes. Um, another lesson I learned that was really helpful for thinking about like paring down, decluttering my clothes. I picked up this book. It's called The Afro Minimalist's Guide to Living with Less by Christine Platt. And it's kind of about minimalism, but it's a very accessible kind of minimalism. I found this very, very helpful. So I'll link this book. Really the question was like, what's compelling me to keep buying? Um, just identifying, we all have our little addictions and you know, I have lots of them. And one of them I think is buying clothes because I'm addicted to an idea of my future self that doesn't exist and never comes. So asking yourself those questions, what's making you continue to buy? Why isn't it enough right now? Okay, I just got rid of like a kind of embarrassing amount of clothes just now, as you just witnessed. This process is new to me. I think I've been an over consumer of clothes for a long time. I've just started kind of doing this new process within the last couple of months. So I'll keep you updated about how it goes. But so far it just feels so good. It's also saving me money. <laughs> In case I didn't say this already, I don't think everyone has to be a minimalist. I don't think I'm ever gonna be a minimalist. Like I don't wanna be drowning in my stuff, but you also like, you don't have to be a minimalist. I don't, I whatever. It does feel good to just like streamline things and to know that like the things I have, I love and wear and use at a reasonable rate. That's what I think. This is a process for me though. And um, I would say I'm like most aroused by my own excel sheet that I made to conduct this study of like what clothes I actually use and wear and keep and which I return. That feels very fun. Ha ha ha. Loser. Yeah, I am a loser, but like it's honestly fun. I really encourage you to use the excel sheet. I'll attach it below. I really liked doing this kind of video. I've missed doing like vloggier kind of content. And if people like this kind of video, 
I think I would call it like chore chats or like cozy chores or something where I'm just like doing everyday stuff in my home, a chore or a something. A lot of people watch YouTube while they're doing chores at home. So I feel like it could be like just a nice cozy, I think I'm gonna call them like cozy chores. I think that's what it's gonna be. So keep an eye out. If you liked it, keep an eye out. If you hated it, don't, you know, keep living your life. That's all I got for you. If you're new to the channel, I do room makeovers, design stuff, lots of hanky panky. Somebody actually commented, I think, that hanky panky is not the phrase that I think it is. And I think they're right. I think hanky panky refers to some kind of like sexual like shenanigans. I think what I mean is like willy nilly. So things are very willy nilly over here. Minimum hanky panky. And you should subscribe if you like either of those. Okay, bye.